YouTube Nation. It's Drew from DEO Productions here. Hold up. Subscribe, like, check out previous videos up here so that I can keep bringing great content to you. So you might be asking yourself why I have these round objects on my table today for review. Well, it's class time, folks. As you may know, I am a tech and sports review channel. And one of the sports that I actually participate in and absolutely love is the sport of bowling. Now, these round objects up here have a name, and they are called bowling balls. Now, if you've ever walked into a bowling alley, and more specifically into a pro shop, which I have been in and around, you may have walked in and gone, wow, this is a lot of stuff. And you may not have used those words. You may have gone, why is there so many different freaking bowling balls on this wall and why do they vary in price and why is this one shiny and why is this one dull and why is this one red and why is that one black well I'm hoping to help you give you a high level overview of the technologies that's on the outside of these balls so that you can make a little bit better informed decision the next time you walk into the pro shop now this video might not be for you you might not be planning to walk into a pro shop and buy yourself a bowling ball but if you are I'll actually be able to give you a little bit of knowledge so that when the pro shop operator starts throwing slang your way, you're not confused and totally dumbfounded as to what he's saying. Let me first start off by saying I am not endorsed by any of these ball companies. I own these balls. I paid for these out of my own pocket and they all range in different prices and they all have different technologies and things that make them better in certain lane conditions and stuff like that uh, than the other. I have a handy dandy whiteboard here and I'm going to draw a bowling lane, a actually lane on here and I'm going to write some terminology so that you can understand what I'm talking about when I talk about these balls. So this is a poorly drawn bowling lane. The words here I have are heads, mid lane, and pin deck. Now, these are the 10 little white sticks at the end of the lane that you are trying to knock down with one of these round objects. And these are the little markings and arrows at the very front of the lane. This is the 55 feet in between this and this. So this is horribly drawn. I know it's horribly drawn, but it's going to give you a better visual representation of what I'm trying to explain here today. So exactly what the hell am I trying? to explain here today and that is a bowling ball cover stock it is the outer portion of each of these spherical objects that is going to be touching this lane and the oil that is on this lane and where it goes and how far it goes down the lane is all determined by the technology that's on the cover stock of this ball so let's start off by naming off the cover stocks pearl solid hybrid urethane okay so i've already got a lot of people confused a pearl is not made out of pearls a solid is not a solid mass well it is a solid mass object a hybrid is not a cross between a car and a truck and a urethane well i have no analogies for that so let's start off with pearl this guy the very end the polished gold beautiful thing this is a hammer black widow gold by hammer and it's going to be a polished bowling ball now this is gold these are multiple different colors and the color has absolutely zero effect on the actual bowling ball besides maybe the selling factor and ooh, this one's prettier than this one i'm gonna go with that so this is a pearl this is going to be a polished version and almost all pearls are going to be polished. They're going to have that shiny surface. They're going to be a little more tacky uh, when you actually touch the bowling ball. And they're going to be actually probably more visually appealing than a lot of the duller balls, of course, unless you make the duller ball really pretty with colors. So what exactly does the pearl ball do? So in a way, it's kind of like a tire that is about an all season tire or even a bald tire at this point that when it goes on the snow and you lock them up it's going to slide a little further and then when it hits the road all of a sudden it's going to well slow down it's going to stop because there's friction there the same way on the bowling lane so you have this bowling lane and right about here or so at about 42 to 40 40 to 42 feet on a typical house shot is where the oil or the higher concentration of oil is going to stop and it is going to be much less than up here than it is down here 
here is going to be your higher volume of oil and where the ball is going to be rolling. Once it hits this portion, the dry portion, is when this ball really does change from all these different ones. So basically what a purl is going to do is when it comes up the lane and it hits that friction, it is going to go a little bit past that friction, much farther past than any of these other ones, and then it is going to take that turn towards the pocket, or in this case, most of you are probably righties, in this case is going to hit that friction, and instead of stopping there and going, it is going to go a little bit farther past that point before it makes its turn towards the pocket. What this is going to be doing is going to be storing a lot more energy in the ball because it doesn't have to read the mid lane or pick up here or start picking up anything because it's not really concerned with what's there. And again, this is a really high level overview. I don't want anybody you know, blowing up the comments saying you have no idea what you're talking about. This is a high level overview to people who might not understand what a cover stock is. So it's not really searching for friction here, not really searching for friction here, and if it does see it, it's not as much as it would be right here. And friction is basically the point of contact between the surface or the cover stock of the ball on the lane, where the oil is the least. And the oil is going to be least about 20 feet before the pin deck or those little white sticks at the end. This ball is going to travel much farther and it is not going to have as much problem getting down the lane. It's not going to start jerking and trying to move towards the pins. It's not going to be picking up. It's going to be effortlessly gliding through the heads and the mid lane. And once it gets to that friction, it's going to kind of be like a lazy sloth. It's going to say, hmm, huh, hey, there's friction. And then all of a sudden, because it's stored all that energy by not having to pick up in the heads in the mid lane, it's going to be much more snappy on the back end. Now, of course, the way the ball is drilled is going to have the best effect on what the ball is going to do and of course the pin distance and all that stuff but that's another video we're talking about the overall cover stock of the ball at this point it's got that lazy sloth effect it's going to go a little bit further down the lane before hey it sees friction and it's going to have a much of course it's not going to be as dramatic as that but it's going to have a much more snappy or flip, skid flip type of reaction as they call it in the pro shop um, than all of these other balls because it's stored so much energy and it's got so far down the lane that when it sees that friction it's got nothing to do besides start going faster and moving towards that pocket. So this is going to be the most skid flip ball there is. Skid flip basically means the point when the ball is skidding down the lane and the point when it sees the reaction or the friction on the lane and flips towards the pocket. All of a sudden it's like, I've got friction, I'm going now towards the pocket. Now of course, you may want something that is a little more aggressive, you want something that's a little less of a sloth and more of a, I don't really know what animal to compare it to. That's where a solid ball is going to come in. A solid ball, almost always, not always, is going to be dull. It's going to have a much lower grit than this ball. It's going to maybe have a 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 grit, whereas this might be 3,000 or 4,000 and polish on top of that. And that's just to make this skid. Now, most of the times, if you take this ball and put it on the lane, it is going to have a much more violent reaction to friction because this is sanded, right? This is much grippier. You have to think of a really studded snow tire. It's going to have much better grip to the snow as opposed to a, as opposed to a bald tire. That's exactly what this ball is going to do. So what is this ball going to do on the lane? Well, it's pretty simple. Most, not all, but most are going to have easy effort through the heads. It's going to start gliding on that oil and somewhere in the mid lane, it's going to pick up that, okay, there's less oil here, and it's going to be much more violent off the friction. Let's say your oil pattern is more of a Christmas tree shape, and it starts to thin out right along here. It's going to see that. This solid cover stock's going to see that, and it's going to start trying to hook right here. It's not going to be hooking right here, but it is going to stop moving the direction that it was going in and start moving in the opposite direction. Now, of course, I'm drawing this as a left-hander. Obviously, you've just got to recreate this on the right side. 
um, but right about here is where it's going to start picking up. It's going to have much more aggressive mid lane, and that's what we're talking about here. Right about here is where it's going to see. Where this ball just kind of whip right through it, this ball is actually going to start slowing down. It's going to start moving towards the pocket that when it even gets here, now it's already started its hook phase, and it already has an idea of where the oil is going to stop, and it's going to have a much more gradual hook. Of course, this is all dependent on the way the ball is drilled and the rev rate and all that stuff, but it's going to have a more overall hook, and it's going to be a more aggressive in the mid lane, and it's going to offer much less length than this. This is going to be very, very strong, and it's probably best suited for bowlers that have a lot of oil out there or have a lower rev rate or something like that so that they don't have to torque on it as much as maybe a pearl ball does. So you get a more overall arc towards the pocket. You get a very aggressive mid lane read and a very aggressive motion in the back. Not as much skid flip as, say, this pearl right here would do, but it is going to give you a pretty good read. It's going to be the strongest of all these different bowling balls. Now there's so many more factors to having a ball go down the lane and go left or go right. You can't look at hook as the overall determining factor of how well you're bowling. You have to look at how well the ball is hitting the pins and if it's going through the pins the right way and if it's carrying and pushing the pins in the right way. That's why sometimes for me, I see that this ball gets a little bit too lazy. Basically it starts here and because it's already burning up its energy here in the mid lane, by the time it gets here, it might actually be a little bit weak. And instead of going through the pins the proper way, it kind of deflects off here and starts sending pins the wrong way. And you might leave a shaker seven or seven or 10 pin or something like that. You might be wondering why. Well, this ball might not be hitting as hard. Of course, this is probably gonna be better for those really high rev rate guys that can really crank on it. And it doesn't really matter what it's doing here because it's got so much on the back because of the rev rate it's going through the pins in a much better way let's talk about the man in the middle that's going to be this guy this is going to be a hybrid ball this is kind of going to be the best of both worlds it basically incorporates two parts one one part another so what that means is this is going to be this particular ball is two parts pearl one part solid so you get a little bit of the best of both worlds here basically what this is going to do on the lane is it's going to be an aggressive overall. It's going to be a little bit aggressive in the mid lane, a little bit aggressive in the heads, but it's going to go a little bit past that, that mark of that oil before it hooks. Basically, it's going to give you the most stronger continuous hook out. It's not going to be as skid flip as this, and it's not going to be necessarily as aggressive as this, but it is going to give you more energy stored here kind of where it matters in my mind, as opposed to here. You're gonna have a lot of energy here, but it's not gonna be burning up as much here before it gets here to this point at the very end. This ball is, depending on the surface and stuff like that that you put on it, is going to be the best of both worlds. It's gonna be something that is going to be best used when there's not a ton of oil, uh, but is not going to be something that you can use, uh, is going to be something that's actually versatile enough to be used on a much, much shorter pattern. Again, not gonna be burning up as much energy here. It's gonna go a little bit between here and here in terms of hook. This is where the pearl hooked. This is where your solid hooked, almost exactly where the oil stopped. It's going to be hooking right here in the middle, kind of gives you a sweet spot and retains that energy through the pins so that you can carry all of them and they disperse in the correct direction. Now let's talk about the last elephant in the room and that's this guy. This is a urethane. Now, a urethane doesn't even really pick up oil. It actually disperses oil. It pushes it around and a lot of people who are bowling on a lane that has a urethane bowler on it are going to struggle a little bit more, especially if they're following in the same path that the bowler before them was. And that is the reason that this ball is going to be overall extremely strong. As soon as you put this ball on the lane, a urethane with a 500 grit pad uh, is going to be searching for oil or searching for reaction. And it's gonna be searching here in the heads, it's going to be searching here in the mid lane, and as soon as it starts to see that friction, that's when it's gonna make the move. Now, it's not gonna be nearly as aggressive as a move or this or this or this. It's actually going to be a very smooth overall arc. This is the smoothest of all there. This is the best ball for the money sometimes because it is the most predictable and often some of the hardest hitting balls on the market. 
this is going to be searching for friction here. It's going to be searching for friction here, here, and all the way here through the pins. But it is not going to get, okay, friction move. No, it is instead going to be like, okay, I'm going to just keep picking up, keep picking up, keep picking up, keep gravitating towards the pocket till eventually it does hit the pocket. It's going to be something that when you expect maybe this ball to hook and it goes or this ball's not going to do that. It's actually going to be much more less aggressive than this or this or this, but it's going to offer much more mid lane, much more head read, and is going to have the same amount of reaction really no matter where it is on the lane. So where is this ball best used? This is ball is going to be best used on very, very short oil patterns like a 32 foot PBA Wolf or just a 32 foot under 40 foot pattern where it's really, really short or very low volumes of oil. And that is because of course the more oil you take off the lane or the shorter the oil pattern is, the more friction that's out there. The more that this ball is going to hook, the more that this ball is going to hook, and the more that this ball is going to hook, and you want something that's not as aggressive that's going to give you a nice overall smooth read that's going to carry you to the pocket all day long. So if I haven't confused you and you're still with me, great. If I have confused you, go ahead and drop a comment below. I will clarify absolutely everything. This has been a general overview of the cover stocks of bowling ball. There is so much more to go over. We're talking about the core of the bowling ball, the oil that's out there, oil patterns, uh, pin to pad, pin distance. There's just so much. And it really is hard to cover on one video or two videos or three videos. So I'm hoping to start a new bowling blog or bowling bits kind of segment where I can explain different parts of the bowling ball and explain where they might best fit your game. And of course, I know a lot about bowling. I know a lot about the technology. I know a lot about bowlers. I've seen a lot of bowlers. So if you have a question about bowling, go ahead, drop me a line, guys. I can help you out and give you not only balls that fit in a certain price point, but what ball might be best for you. Um, I've seen many, many people bowl, and I've been bowling for a while now, and I understand all of this, but a lot of people don't. And when they come into the pro shop and they're just flabbergasted by the amount of bowling balls that are around them and the price that's on the wall, I have to kind of help explain that. So I'm hoping that this video starts to do that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been another quality, semi-in-depth view of bowling ball cover stocks and another video from DEO Productions. Of course, subscribe, hit like, watch the videos up above. Keep the channel going. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much. Peace.